uh, Chair Lear. Thank you. Um, we are ready. I'm on item 13.2, library materials model policy. We had an interesting discussion and we definitely learned from this meeting why there is an odd number of board members um, on committees um, and it is much more effective. The motion for the board on this item is that uh, the board review and consider approval of a library materials model policy in a future meeting. Thank you. Discussion to the motion? Seeing none, um, there's a motion on the floor that the board review and consider approval of a library materials policy in a future meeting. Please vote. That passes unanimously. Chair Lear. Thank you, item 13.3. Um, school counseling ratio report. The committee moves that the board approve the plans for the 2021-2022 school year submitted by LEAs who are out of compliance with the one to 350, um, one counselor to 350 students school counselor ratios. Thank you. Discussion to the motion. Seeing none, there's a motion on, oh, Vice Chair Belknap. Yes, thank you. Board Member Lear, I, I tried to get all of this in, but I'm kind of curious as to, first of all, 350 is way too many, but that's beyond the point. What are some of the plans that they're going to do and how many years have they been in that plan? How I, many years? I, I appreciate that question. We had the same question and the, the um, content specialist would be the best person to answer that. I don't know if that should be. It's okay, okay. Kara, I'll pull that offline. I just wondered if you had it. I'll, I'll pull I that offline and reach to it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Item 13.0, oh, no, did we vote on that, Cindy? We did not. There's a motion on the floor that the board approve the plans for the 2021-2022 school year submitted by LEAs who are out of compliance with the one to 350 school counselor ratios. Please vote. That passes unanimously. Item 13.4, R27768, it's just a continuation, so no changes. Prohibition of corporal punishment in Utah's public schools. The committee moves that the board continue R277-608, prohibition of corporal punishment in Utah's public schools, draft one, on second and final reading. Thank you. Discussion to the motion. Seeing no hands, there's a motion on the floor that the board continue R277-608, prohibition of corporal punishment in Utah public schools, draft one on second and final reading. Please vote. That passes unanimously. Item 13.5, R277-309, appropriate licensing and assignment of teachers. Um, this was in response to a, uh, a discussion. There's, there's no motion for the board. Let me start with that. This was in response to a motion for a change in a rule that was necessitated by a change in legislation. Um, Unfortunately, we had two members in favor and two members abstaining, which are no votes. And um, in the context of enough to pass a rule out of committee. So uh, we have no motion for the board. And the motion could be made, I guess. Okay. Board member Booth. You're muted. So sorry. Vice Chair Davis, I, I do have, I would like to make a motion that the board approves R277-309 draft one on final reading. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor. Uh, discussion to the motion. Uh, board member Booth, would you like to speak to your motion? Uh, since we were kind of at a stalemate in the committee, we felt it would be wise to bring it to the board and I'm in support of this uh, draft uh, as it's now presented. 
Thank you. Board Member Hymas. Thank you. Um, I was one who voted no on this originally, and I I still have concerns um, over it. I, I understand that there may not be, according to law, there may not be anything I can do, um, but um, there, there are just too many opportunities. We have such great professionals who have spent a career in special education outside of schools, helping um, special needs individuals, and then to uh, have them go back to school or have them not have the opportunity to help us in our schools as a, as a director of a, of a school or LEA, wherever, um, would be um, just a shame to utilize some of those resources that are available to us. Um, so I'll, I'll continue to vote no on this. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Earl. I'm sorry, you're going to have to help me with this. Was this, does this require within a certain period um, for a certificate to be um, put into place or does it say you can't at all? I apologize. I probably should have looked up this question. Chair Lear. Um, I am not the best person. It does, it, it, my understanding is that is it's an, an immediate, um, change that requires now there's a, a director of special education that has a license per federal requirements. But I think someone like Leah um, or perhaps uh, Malia could explain this, the, the, the thinking behind the, the bill and then the rule better than I can. Dr. Height. Yes, thank you. Um, Malia Height, Educator Licensing Coordinator. Um, the legislation was changed this last um, session to comply with IDEA federal um, law for special educators. And um, that legislation indicates that we, or that, excuse me, that you, the board, draft rules to um, ensure that any individual serving as a special education director at a charter school has appropriate educator licensure. And so the rule is drafted to state that individuals who meet the guidelines of IDEA, federal special ed law, would um, have these appropriate um, license areas. Thank you. So Jordan there's Paula? no mechanism. Yeah, so there's no mechanism if they are hired on to be able to acquire that in the future, they have to have it. Would this hamper the ability for them to actually service students if they can't have a director at a smaller charter? In other words, they may not be able to actually do special education there. It, can you maybe answer that? I don't know if someone can. Chair, if I may. Yes, please. And also answer, do we have a choice in this matter? Or is this the law? Can you answer that as well? Yeah, so the law states that we have to have that educators who are serving as special ed directors must have an educator license. Um, the, the flexibility comes with what kind of a license that is. However, um, special ed law states that anybody who's providing special education services to students must have um, a, a license for um, to provide special education services. Um, there's nothing in, um, in board rule or in law that states that a charter must have a special education director. Um, they must have a special educator if they're gonna provide special education services. Um, there are mechanisms in place for individuals to um, work towards a professional educator license in special education. Specifically, um, we have the Apple SPED program, which is the alternate program that is sponsored by USBE special education. There are also a variety of university-based programs. And while someone is working towards that, they are qualified for an associate level license in special education, which would meet the requirements of this board draft rule. Thank you. Board Member Hutchings, is that what you were going to say? Yeah, I'll just say it really quick. Um, having uh, special education is such a, a tricky area. And as a school leader, I, I need someone with that background on my staff to make sure to protect and to serve those students with those needs. 
And um, I just, I, I think it's really important. I'm glad there's, there is a pathway for uh, teachers to gain that license. And it, so they are given that runway. And I did actually want to make that point that a charter school is not required to have a special education di um, director. And so there's many ways that a charter school could uh, comply. Thank you. Board Member Moss. I apologize for not digging into this as well. I didn't realize a motion was coming. Um, I'm just curious from those who had concerns about the rule, is there an adverse effect here on operations of, of some of these charters that are smaller? And was there a way that it was felt that folks could comply with the current legislation in the absence of this rule? <coughs> I don't know who that would be directed to. I'm just, you know, I think I understand now that you don't need to have a director. So I question why, if you do, do choose to have one, they would need to have a SPED license. But I, I understand one side of the argument. Just curious if anybody knows the other side of that. Um, would either of the two people who voted against this like to respond? I can, I can just give some thoughts. You know, we. We are already at a, at a place where we are struggling to keep uh, or to get individuals. And I, I get what you're saying. And in fact, I don't know if that was made clear to me um, in the uh, law and licensing com uh, committee meeting, or I, I must have missed it, that it's not in law that a charter has to have a director. Um, it's just we, we start putting, it, like I said, there are people out there who can, who can do this very well and who have been doing it for years throughout their career. And then we say to them, you're fantastic, but you don't have a license. Um, and not only do you have a, do you not have a license, but it's not in, in the area, right? It's not in special ed, preschool, special ed, speech language pathology, or school um, psychologist. And so we're just limiting. And that's, that's my concern is we're limiting in um, smaller areas, smaller schools, smaller towns, um, who can get help when there's resources available. Now we still have to have, uh, to, to the other point, you still have to have licensed um, special ed teachers, right? And so we're not, I, I, in, in my opinion, we're not jeopardizing the program. We're just opening up for additional resources that could possibly help these students in these communities. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Or, um, Board Member Earl. I, I, it's red tape-ish. Is that what I'm understanding? <laughs> like you couldn't, you may have a director now, but it, because of the new, this new policy, you may just call them something else. And am I right in saying that? That because you can't, you would, if they didn't meet the licensure, you just give them, a, you could give them another title and then they would be something else. I, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to understand where we might be putting complications on districts instead of, and maybe Stacy. I know Stacy. it sounds like she understands this a little bit better, but. Oh, uh, I was just reminded we have a time certain at 3.30. So a quick answer to that question from Dr. Height and then Stacy Hutchings. Um, the, just to help clarify the, perhaps the, the scope of the rule, as well as the current status of the rule, is that this is really to ensure that that individuals who are providing special education services to students have the required licensing that mm -hmm. is required through IDEA. And currently of the 58 special education directors that are assigned in a charter school, there are two of the 58 who do not comply with this rule as written. Thank you, uh, Stacy Hutchings. Just really short, I, I, it, to me, giving someone the title of special education director, it, it says they have a certain level of expertise in that area. Thank you. Seeing no other hands, we have a motion on the floor that the board approves R277-309 draft one on final reading. Please vote. We have no votes by board member Klein, Hymas, Moss, and Earl. This motion passes 7-0.